السلام عليكم ويلكم تو بيدياتريك كيس ريفيو توداي وي ويل توك اباوت ذا كلاسيفيكيشنز اوف جوفينايل ايديوباسيك ارثرايتس امونج بيدياتريك بيشنتس ليتس بيجين كيس نمبر 1 ا 10 يير اولد هاز بين اكسبيرينسينج هاي ديلي فيفر فور ذا باست مانث ذا فيفر بيكس ان ذا ليت افترنون ذي هاف ديفلوبد ا سالمون بين كراش ذات كومز اند جوز بارتيكولارلي ديورينج فيفر سبايك ذي اولسو كومبلين اوف جوينت بين بريدومينانتلي ان ذا نيز اند ريست accompanied by noticeable swelling the child has been increasingly fatigued and their parents have noticed mild enlargement of the lymph node <coughs> question number 1 what is the most likely diagnosis oligoarthritis systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis rheumatoid arthritis infectious arthritis the correct answer is 2 systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis characterized by hallmark symptoms of daily high fever and salmon pain crash in addition to the arthritis and the joint swelling also systemic features like lymphadenopathy so it is called systemic because the patient often presents with significant systemic symptoms such as fever rash and arthritis it is driven by widespread inflammatory response affecting multiple organ system question b which symptom is characteristic of systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis but less common in other juvenile idiopathic arthritis subtypes 1 chronic joint pain 2 quotidian fever or daily fever 3 nail biting 4 uveitis the correct answer is 2 quotidian fever or daily fever the typical spike in the late afternoon or evening is a distinctive feature of systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis this pattern of fever is rare in other types of juvenile idiopathic arthritis which tend to have more consistent symptoms related to primarily joint inflammation not fever Question C. What distinguishes systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis from other juvenile idiopathic arthritis subtypes in terms of treatment? Number one, exclusive use of insights. Two, focus on systemic inflammation management. Three, avoidance of immunosuppressive therapy. Four, emphasize on physical therapy only. The correct answer is two. The treatment of systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis differs from other juvenile arthritis subtypes due to its systemic nature management offered requires a combination of inflammatory and immunosuppressive medications to control both joint and systemic symptoms the systemic inflammation in systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis can affect organs beyond the joint necessitating a broader approach to syrup case number two a 16 year old has been experiencing joint pain and swelling in multiple joints including hands, wrists, ankles, and the knees for the past six months. Blood tests reveal a positive rheumatoid factor and elevated inflammatory markers. The joint pain is symmetric and more severe in the morning. Question A. What is the most likely diagnosis? 1. Systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis. 2. Rheumatoid factor positive polyarthritis. 3. Oligoarthritis. 4. Zoriatic arthritis. The correct answer is 2. Polyarthritis rheumatoid factor post. So the presence of systemic arthritis in multiple joints, particularly in small joints of the hands, feet, along with a positive rheumatoid factor, strongly suggests polyarthritis, which is rheumatoid factor positive, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. This type resembles adult rheumatoid arthritis and is marked by significant joint involvement and the potential for joint damage if not adequately treated. Question B. What distinguishes polyarthritis rheumatoid factor positive from rheumatoid factor negative juvenile idiopathic arthritis? 1. Lack of uveitis. 2. Asymmetric joint involvement. 3. Presence of rheumatoid factor in blood test. 4. Absence of systemic symptoms. The correct answer is 3. So the key differentiator between polyarthritis rheumatoid factor positive and the negative is the presence of rheumatoid factor in the blood. And this is important because rheumatoid factor positive juvenile idiopathic arthritis tends to have a more aggressive course and a higher risk of joint damage and disability. The rheumatoid factor is an antibody that not typically found in healthy children and indicates a more severe form of the arthritis. And this brings us to the question C, what is the significant risk associated with polyarthritis rheumatoid factor positive juvenile idiopathic arthritis? 1. Rapid progression to systemic symptoms 2. High risk of joint deformities and disability 3. Immediate onset of uveitis 4. Quick resolution with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs Of course, the correct answer is 2. 
joint deformities and long term disability if not treated aggressively. So early and aggressive treatment including disease modifying anti rheumatoid drugs and biologics is crucial in preventing these com outcomes. Case number three. A 14 year old complaints of pain, swelling in joint, including both knee joints, elbow joints, and one wrist. The joint involvement is asymmetric and there is no family history of psoriasis. Also, blood tests show negative results for rheumatoid factor. Question A What is the most likely diagnosis? Systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis, polyarthritis rheumatoid factor negative, oligoarthritis, encystitis related arthritis. The correct answer is 2 polyarthritis rheumatoid factor negative. So here is the presentation of rheumatoid factor negative polyarthritis. The presentation of asymmetric arthritis in multiple joints along with the absence of rheumatoid factor and usually indicating a less aggressive disease course. Question B. What feature is often seen in polyarthritis rheumatoid factor negative juvenile idiopathic arthritis but not in rheumatoid factor positive? 1. Symmetric joint involvement. 2. High frequency of uveitis. 3. Presence of subcutaneous nodules. 4. More severe systemic symptoms. The correct answer is 2. Inflammation of the eye or uveitis is more commonly associated with rheumatoid factor negative juvenile idiopathic arthritis compared to rheumatoid factor positive. And this complication requires a careful monitoring as it can lead to vision problems if untreated. So rheumatoid factor negative juvenile idiopathic arthritis need regular ophthalmological examinations to monitor for this complication. Question C. What aspect of treatment is crucial in polyarthritis rheumatoid factor negative juvenile idiopathic arthritis? 1. High dose corticosteroid. 2. Immediate surgical intervention. 3. Exclusively symptomatic treatment. 4. Early aggression therapy with disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. The correct answer is 4. So, early aggressive therapy with disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs is essential in managing polyarthritis rheumatoid factor negative. This helps to control joint inflammation, preventing joint damage, and maintaining function. Despite this subtype tends to have less severe course than rheumatoid factor positive, but adequate disease control is still crucial to prevent long-term complications. Case 4. A 6-year-old child has been experiencing pain and swelling in their right knee and left ankle for the past 4 months. The child has no family history of psoriasis, and the blood tests show negative results for rheumatoid factor. There are no signs of uveitis upon ophthalmological examination. Question A. What is the most likely diagnosis? 1. Persistent oligoarthritis. 2. Polyarthritis rheumatoid factor negative. 3. Systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis. 4. Encystitis related arthritis. The correct answer is number 1. The presence of arthritis in less than 4 in less than 5 joints during the first 6 months of disease without the development of arthritis in more joints characterizes persistent origo arthritis. This subtype is often seen in younger children and has a better prognosis compared to polyarticular forms. Question B. What is a common complication of oligoarthritis persistent? 1. Uveitis. 2. Cirrhositis. 3. Rheumatoid nodule. 4. Psoriatic skin changes. The correct answer is 1. Uveitis. The inflammation of the middle layer of the eye or uveitis is common complication of oligoarthritis, particularly in persistent form. So also regular eye examination are crucial here for the detection of uveitis. Question C. What distinguishes persistent from extended oligoarthritis? Number one, number of joints involved initially. Number two, presence of systemic symptoms. Number three, progression to involve more joints over time. Number four, age of ones. The correct answer is three. As it called extended, the primary difference between persistent and extended lies disease progression. In persistent oligoarthritis, the child continues to have four or fewer joints affected throughout the disease course. In contrast, extended oligoarthritis progress to involve five or more joints after the initial six months.